Alrighty folks, we are back in the garage. Uh, this next adventure in my life, I need to uh, have a way to compress air on the go, so I'm gonna throw together a gas-powered air compressor. I bought a engine from Harbor Freight and a compressor head from Harbor Freight. I'm gonna show you the basics of how they work, and they're super simple to throw together if you needed one for something. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, further down the road, you'll see why I need this air compressor, but for now I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna try and throw this one together without welding. So uh, the way I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna mount this probably in the bed of my truck, and then my truck already has air tanks on it, so I'll just plumb into that system. Um, but stay tuned, I'll show you how to throw one together without welding, they're super simple. So let's get after it. Okay, here's my pump. Something like 17 cubic feet a minute at 40. I think it's 15 something cubic feet a minute at 90 PSI. This is my engine. It's a six horsepower, might be a five and a half horsepower Predator engine. It's 212 cubic inches or cubic centimeters. <laughs> 212 cubic inches, all right. I've saved you the trouble. I've laid out all my marks on here. Uh, it's hard to see, but I've laid out all my marks. This is where the pump's gonna go. Engine will go here. Um, I've set it back quite a ways because I'm going to take this and go find somebody with a press brake to fold a flange here across there for two reasons. Uh, the pulley for the pump sits down below where it sits, so it needs to be raised up a hair and just to give this more rigidity so it won't want to bend when I tension the belt and when this thing's running, it won't want to vibrate hopefully as much. But I will get these drilled and then we'll slot these holes and those should be pretty good. So we'll get these, let me get these drilled. We'll go from there. Okay, so what we got here, don't pay attention to these holes. Those are old holes from another project. This is where the engine's gonna be. Slotted these two inches to allow to uh, tension the belt. And then I've got my holes over here for the pump. Like I said, we're gonna come in here three inches. I'm gonna fold that down 90. I'm gonna fold it down in the back 90. And that'll get it up. And that'll give me room to put bolts and stuff under the bottom, run airline and stuff for the discharge under the bottom and set it up high enough for that pulley to get off the deck of my bed. So I will get this thing, I'll find somebody with a press brake and we'll get those bent and then we get the pump and motor mounted, we'll get a belt, we'll get the uh, check valve, unloader valve in there and we'll keep going. All right, so I got this plate bent. Don't pay attention to the two sets of slotted holes. There was miscommunication at the fabricator and it got bent the wrong way. So I'd make some new ones to get my engine on the right side. No big deal. I've got the pump bolted down and we've got plenty of clearance here. I'm gonna get the engine on here and snugged up. I got a pulley that we can kind of, we'll center it. Maybe we'll put it a little more uh, towards the shortest side. Then we can measure for a belt and I will run and get one of those and then my uh, unloader valve and all the other stuff should be here pretty soon. So we'll get this uh, engine mounted and we'll go from there. Okay, I'm gonna get those snugged up. They all got lock nuts on them. So it's gonna take a minute to run them down. So I'll catch you guys in a minute. Okay. So I've got our, our engine loosely mounted. It's about a, oh, I don't know, an inch this way of its closest setting to the pump. Um, this is a four inch pulley. I've got it eyeballed, lined up, 
Uh, the flywheel on here is a two groove pulley. This is a single groove. I'm gonna see if it'll work with a single groove because I didn't wanna wait for a two groove pulley to get here. If it slips or won't do it, then we'll get a two groove pulley. But I went with a four inch pulley. Uh, the pump uh, gives you the formula to punch in the flywheel diameter uh, to figure out what diameter pulley you need for the drive pulley. So this has a max RPM of 1,050. This has a max RPM of 3,600. A four inch pulley will make this so we will never, even if this is at top no load, this will never overspeed. So this should be good enough. We'll see how it does for building air. So what I've got here, I've got this extension cord. It's a smaller one. So this will kind of lay down in the groove and then what I'll be able to do is fish this around here. We'll eyeball this. So give me a place to start from. So we can make a mark here. Like so. I'll take this off, measure that. That'll give us a pretty good idea of what belt we need, the length of belt. So we'll measure that and I'll run and get a belt and we'll be back. All right, I got everything mounted, belts on. That was a little tight, but we made it work. So I didn't have to run clear back to town to get a new belt. I need to mount this. This is the unloader pilot control valve. It'll go somewhere in the neighborhood of here. But I've got this bulkhead fitting there's a nut that'll go on the back side of this, so I'll drill a hole in here, put that there, and that can go there. This, I'm gonna get a 90 to go here, and this will sit here, and then my throttle uh, cable comes up here into where the linkage is to actuate this thing. So we'll get a 90. We gotta go, we gotta make a list of all the different fittings I need. That can go there. I need to run to the hose shop, come off the discharge here with a steel braided something to that. Don't know if I'm gonna get a 90. And I'll figure that one out later. But that's that. I've got, I have the oil in the engine, oil in the pump, air cleaners on this thing. I need to run and get some gas and I need to let this thing run for, the engine says they want three hours unloaded at top RPM to break that thing in. Yeah, we don't have that kind of time. So this just needs to run, pump needs to run unloaded for 30, 40 minutes. So I'll go get some gas. We'll get the braking out of the way. And then hopefully on Monday, I'll have a chance to get to the hose shop. And I will see you back here when we get all the rest of our parts. All right, so I have built this 90 here with this nipple. And I put a male uh, quick air chuck on it. And so I'll be able to just slide this in the bed of my truck. My truck already has air on it. So I've got like seven and a half gallons of air pressure or air tank on my truck. And I've got a belt driven compressor on the engine, but it doesn't flow enough to keep up with what we need. Like if I'm out there doing small tires, it'll be fine. But if I gotta do big tires, it's probably not gonna keep up. So I've got this one that I can set in the back of my truck and with this quick connect here I can just hurry and quick connect onto it I'll run a hose down my air tanks with a female air chuck on it and I'll hold it all tight keep air from leaking and I don't have this compressor in there 
So let me get this tightened up and I will show you what I'm talking about. All right, we got our pump mount, engine mount, belts on. This is a pilot unloader check valve with a throttle cable. Now the cable's not on and I'm going to put that on in a second. But I have just put that fitting on underneath and it comes out here to this male quick connect fitting. So I'm going to slide this in my truck with the engine pointed towards the tailgate. I'm going to hook this airline. This will hook here. And then this can run down into my truck and hook into the air system. And then I've put another one of these on the bumper. So I'll show you guys what I'm doing at the end of this video, but I'm putting tire machines in a trailer, gonna start a mobile tire business. So then this will feed my truck's air system. I've got the same air chuck on the bumper of the truck and I'll put this same kind of a whip deal on the, the trailer and have an air tank in the trailer. So this will be my big air compressor when I need to go out and do tires. So this thing's pretty much done. I need to get, I need to run to the hose shop and get a stainless steel line that goes from this JIC, it'll run it down and go to this. And then this valve will unload and load the engine and compressor. Uh, what's different about this than like an electric compressor is when you stop building air, the engine is still running. So instead of uh, this checks, doesn't let your air pressure from your tanks come back through. And then it switches and just vents all the air coming out of the pump to atmosphere so the engine can stay running and then when it when you use enough air you'll hear it you'll hear it switch back it'll go psh, and then it'll kick the the throttle up on the engine and start building air so i'm gonna get this throttle linkage hooked up or i'm gonna get in here anyway put the throttle cable here i don't know if i've got the exact right end to hook for my throttle in there but we're gonna put that on and then one step closer all right, I've got this bolted down. And what I've done here is I've got it on a quick connect here. And so I've got a male coming off the compressor. So this, when I'm not using the compressor, I can just hang this up here out of the way. Those two bolts, yeah, it's kind of a pain, but that will come out of there fairly quickly. So that will come out. I've got an onboard compressor on the truck that runs off the engine. So I've still got air if this compressor's not in here. The only reason I need this big compressor in here is if I gotta go out and run a big tire gun or I'm doing tires on the semi. If I'm gonna be doing tires on cars or anything smaller, I can probably get away with what's on my truck, but I'll just leave this in here. If I go camping or something or I need the bed, I can just yank it out of there pretty quick. And then with that chuck there, I still have air on my truck and I'm not leaking everywhere. So here, I've got this tank here. This is a two and a half gallon tank. That's got my switch and everything in it for the air on the truck for that compressor because it's just on, it's just an AC style compressor. So it instead of unloading and purging like you hear an electric compressor in your shop or something, it just unloads the compressor by unlocking the clutch on it. And then I've got a five gallon tank here above the muffler. There's not much. It'll work for now. Um, what I'm gonna do, what I'm doing here is I'm setting up a trailer, that enclosed trailer back there. I've got a tire machine and a balancer in it. So I'm gonna get a big tank, probably a 60 gallon tank and put it in the trailer. And then that way I've got plenty of air reservoir and then all my compressor and the generator and everything will be on the truck. So that's that, I'll fire this thing up. I haven't quite, I've got to figure out this throttle. It slips, I got to figure out some way to better clamp it so it quits moving because it'll it'll idle and kick it up and down like it should for a few times, but then this slips back enough to where it idles so low when it kicks it up, it won't, um, it won't go to high idle, it just dies. So the unloader here still works, but I will start this up and we'll let some air out of it and you can hear it kick up and down. I'm just going to run the throttle manually for now. So I'll let some air out and you hear it kick up.
it'll work for now it's it flows pretty good it cuts in at 100 cuts out at 110 so i need to tinker with that uh you can mess with this all right here to get it uh you know come in at 90 and go out at 120 or wherever you want it so i've got to tinker with that but i don't have a gauge on the truck i've got to get it i've got all the line there and the, tr the gauge i just need to get a bracket for it but that's that really simple to make um, if you wanted to you could weld that plate to a tank or something that's what i did in the first one i built but i figured the tank's going to be in my trailer i've got tanks on the truck so this makes it nice that i can just unbolt it two guys can lift that thing easy just slide it in and out if i ever need the truck it takes about 10 minutes and then that quick connect there makes it nice so i hope you guys enjoyed this um, let me know in the comments Maybe I'll post it in the comment or in the description how much I've spent on this, but it was really cheap. Um, so, hope you guys enjoyed that. Like it, subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get this channel to 1,000 subscribers, and we'll go from there. I'll see you in the next one.